so today we are going to explore long division. Before we get started, let's go over some basic terms. This is our long division problem. Inside the house is like I like to call it. This is called the dividend. We are dividing it by the divisor. Our answer when we work the problem will be called the quotient. All right, so we're going to learn these five steps in order to do long division. The first step will be divide, the second step multiply, then the third step subtract, bring down will be our fourth step, and then the R and R is going to stand for repeat or remainder. And I will explain that when we get to that step. So let's look at our first problem. So the very first thing you do is step one. We're looking at the six and we think, well, can six be uh, divided into two? two? Will six go into two? And it will not. But will six go into 22? Yes. So you think, how many times will it go in without going over? So six times three is 18, right? If you did six times four, that would go over to 24 and you can't go over. So put your three and you're putting it always above the number you're dividing by. Don't put it above this two, put it above this two. All right, so that's our first step. And I like at the beginning to like, uh, if you're doing this at home, write this on your paper and put your finger on the step that you're using. It's kind of like training wheels. Once you get good at it, you won't need this anymore. But when you're learning, you need to follow these steps. All right, so step two, multiply. Six times three is 18. Step three is subtract. So we're gonna subtract these two numbers and 22 minus 18 is four. All right, the next step is bring down. The next number we'll bring down will be three. So at this point, we're at step five, and you're determining, is this our remainder? Is this the number, the answer three with the remainder of 43? No, you would never have a remainder larger than the divisor. And we know it's not the remainder because there's no answer above these two numbers. So you have to have a number above these three numbers here to finish it out. So we're going to repeat, this R will be repeat all the way back to the beginning step. All right, so now we're dividing again. You're thinking 43 divided by 6, how many times will 6 fit into 43? And that will be 7 times. Because you know your fact, 7 times 6 is 42. Okay, now, we, and, and see, I do this automatically, but I've already skipped a step. So we divided, all right? And we said it'll go in there seven times, and then I multiplied seven times six is 42. Now, step three, subtract three minus two, and then bring down, bring down your next number, which is two. Now you're back to the same thing, repeat a remainder. Is this the remainder? No, we're not finished yet, so repeat back to the beginning step. How many times will six fit into 12? Two times. So we're multiplying, two times six is 12, and subtract, get zero. Is there any other numbers to bring down? No. Nope. And so here we are at the end, repeat a remainder. Well, there's nothing to, we're finished. There's a number above each number, and the, z, the, the answer we have here is smaller than the divisor. And when you end with zero, you know it's it div divided evenly. So there's no reason to put remainder zero. You can, but it really doesn't make any difference, right? So you can just leave that off. Your quotient is 372. Okay, so we're going to try another example. Okay, so let's look at another example. So here's another one. We'll start with the same step. How many times will seven fit into the first number? One time. All right, so we're dividing. Seven will go into eight one time. Multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat a remainder. Definitely repeat, all right? Seven can go into 13 one time. Multiply. Subtract, 
bring down. Repeat a remainder. We're going to repeat, right? Okay, so keep repeating. Now, 7 can go into 61 8 times. 8 times 7 is 56. Subtract and get 5. Bring down and this becomes 59. Repeat a remainder. Repeat. Go back. 7 can go into 59. 8 times again. 8 times 7 is 56. Subtract. Bring down. Nothing to bring down. Repeat a remainder. So here we have a number above every number in the dividend and the number is smaller than the divisor so we know this is our remainder. And there's a couple, two or three different ways you could write this, but for today, I want to show you, you can write this as the quotient like this, 1,188 with a remainder of 3, or you can say 1,188 with 3 as a fraction over the denominator 7, okay, because it's 3 out of 7, and this will always be your denominator. All right, so here's another way you can write it. This means the same thing. Let's try another one. Okay, so we're going to look at our last example and follow the same steps. So take a look at the first number here, 8, and you're thinking, can 8 go into 5? No. Can 8 go into 52? Absolutely. How many times? So 8 times 6 is 48 and it doesn't go over, so we'll do that. 8 times 6 is 48. So, um, and that was multiply. Subtract. Bring down. Repeat a remainder. We're repeating. 8 will go into 43. 5 times. Multiply subtract, bring down, repeat a remainder. Now continue because we need a number up here. 8 goes into 34 four times, multiply, subtract, nothing else to bring down, repeat a remainder. It's smaller than the divisor, we have a number above each number, we know we're finished. Okay, so you can write it like this. Here's your quotient. Or if you want to write it like a fraction, remember how we did it last time? 654, and this is your numerator, and your denominator is 8. And this can be simplified to 1 fourth. Okay, so there you have it. Practice some, follow each step and you'll be a pro before long.